Hey guys, Matthew here. So this is going to be the follow-up on the last video I made about lab running. In this one, we're going to talk about like the two variations of the build I play, which is the uh, trapper, you know, insta phase is arrow kind of build. It's about going as fast as possible. It's not the safest thing. It's not like a juggernaut. Not necessarily something I play in a hardcore, for example. Uh, but it is fast. And then there's two variations of it. There's the variation that is safer, and there's the variation that is faster. I'm playing the variation that is faster because I really didn't care about being safe I was mostly just going for speed and uh, we're gonna go over both variations so we're gonna start off with the uh, non chill variation which is the uh, this one that I have in POB here uh, the POB will be linked in the description of the video as well uh, alongside all the other links and useful stuff so you can check that out Essentially, we're playing a Pathfinder. That's pretty obvious. This one looks like it's level 92. Uh, we are getting two skill points from the Bandits. You could consider getting a Lyra for the resistances, though. Uh, especially if you're going for the Chill variation of the build. Uh, because capping out your resistances can be a little bit hard. Uh, so that is one thing you can consider doing. Going a Lyra, especially early in the league, when getting that f those 15 res could be the difference between a 10c ring and a 2x ring. So uh, definitely something to consider. But we're going to Pathfinder. Uh, the first ascendancy we're going to get is, well, it really depends. It's up to you when you're leveling. But normally I go Nature's Adrenaline. Just because it gives me movement speed during my leveling process and attack speed, which I normally level as a Toxic Rain character. So it works out to be pretty good. Then normally I'll go uh, Nature's Boon uh, into Master Alchemists. And I'll finish it off with Veteran Boyer if you're lacking, if you're lacking damage. If you don't need the damage from Veteran Boyer, uh, you can go ahead and grab some two more Flask Effect Nodes. So one here and like one here, for example. Uh, or one there. It doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, it really depends on your damage. And then the variation that you, you see right now, this is the Mal Master Alchemist variation. So this one you don't, or sorry, the reverse shield variation, you don't get Master Alchemist because Master Alchemist gives you immune to elemental elements during any flask effect, which means you'd be immune to chill, you'd be immune to uh, freeze, you'd be immune to you know ignite and all that stuff. And we don't want that uh, because we want to self-chill. So this is why... Um, uh, my tree personally doesn't have Master Alchemist, otherwise I wouldn't be able to self-chill. Which is why I get uh, this node here and this node here. That being said, if you're playing the non reversal version, you would obviously go Master Alchemist. So you'd go like 1, 2, 3, and then your Uber Lab would probably be Veteran Boyer if you need more damage. Or otherwise, just get more speed with the Flask Effect nodes. Alright, so to level up this character, I would honestly greatly advise to not level this character up as what it is. If you look at the skill tree, it's a little bit like a fucking maze, and all you get is movement speed and dexterity nodes, and that's about it. So it levels up like absolute shit. It's not fun to level up. Uh, it's really, really bad, actually. So I would not level this character up as what it is. I would probably level it up as, say, a Toxic Rain character, or a Caustic Arrow character, or, of course, if you have a lot of Twink gear, right? Let's say you're a little bit later into the league when you want to make it. Personally, when I made this character, this league, I leveled it up as a, um, as a, uh, what was it called? I started off as Caustic Arrow, then I went into Toxic Rain, and I think the moment I got Blast Rain, I switched to Blast Rain. Uh, I wouldn't really say it was a good choice, though. Blast Rain kind of sucked. Uh, but I did get to level 60, and at level 60, I had a friend help me get to level, uh, 95, uh, from uh, doing basically, I think we started off doing uh, mines, right? So we started off in the mines from delving, got me to like 70-ish, then we did some three ways, then four ways, then five ways, and also some beachheads. Uh, so that got me to 95 within like a day, or two actually, yeah, it took two days to do the whole thing. And um, that's basically how the leveling process goes. Otherwise, if you wanted to level solo, I would say keep leveling as Toxic Rain or Caustic Arrow or something like that. All the way up to like 85. And around 85, you can just uh, switch or, switch it up and move, uh, you know, convert to this build, which is a Trapper build, by the way. Uh, you don't really go mines anymore. So um, then you'd switch over to this build. 
And of course, if you want to get more levels up to like 95 or something, 90, 95, or even 100, then you'd probably buy yourself, uh, buy your way into some rotations or something. Five ways, Chayula Breedstones, or any other Breedstone really, uh, Beachheads, whatever it is. Just buy your way into rotations and you get free XP. Well, it's not free because you have to buy, but you have to buy your way in, but yeah, anyways. So, uh, how does the build work? Well, essentially, what we're doing is we're just getting move speed. That's that's pretty much what we're doing. We're getting as much move speed as we possibly can. Uh, while also getting our resistances in check. That's really important. Obviously, you want to be rest capped when you're farming lab. Uh, there's fire traps, lightning traps, and cold traps in there. If you get hit by any of them, you're just going to die if you don't have resistances. Because like a, f a cold trap is probably going to freeze you. Uh, or a fire trap is just gonna burn you to death. Like there's just a lot of traps, and you're gonna want to be uh, you're, you're gonna be you're gonna want to be rest capped, or at least very very close to being rest capped if you want to actually have a chance to survive in lab, especially Uber lab. Otherwise, though, the tree is basically all about getting movement speed. As you can see, we get movement speed over here. We get movement speed here, here, here. Oh uh, well, here we don't get really movement speed but we uh, it ignored all the movement speed penalties from armor which technically means we get like three percent more movement speed uh we're getting movement speed here this cluster of three nodes we get it with uh, unnatural instinct this is something i would skip early in the league if you don't have the currency to afford an unnatural instinct early even though to be honest they are quite cheap if you pick them up very very early uh because nobody can afford them so they're severely underpriced and they go up in price fairly quickly afterwards uh, so probably pick up an unnatural instinct fairly quickly. Otherwise, we're also uh, getting movement speed here. We're getting movement speed here and here. That depends on which pathing you go to uh, and uh, if you need more strength and whatnot. Because if you do need strength, and uh, then you kind of have to pick up this node for 10 strength. Otherwise, you can decide to go... Uh, you, you can decide to drop like this node here and you could path into Aspect of the Eagle for another 4%. Or you could path into these nodes here. Uh, it's got some uh, chance to avoid being stunned, which is actually quite useful. So these three nodes are pretty good. Got some movement speed, some movement speed, some movement speed. Um, and yeah, the other thing we're getting is also effect on you. Uh, no, wait. So it's, uh, what is it? flask applied to you yeah, there you go applied to you we're getting all the flask effect we can possibly get so we're getting this node here for 10 percent flask effect we're getting this node here for another eight percent we're getting th uh, this node here for five you could also get this node here for five as well uh, as you can see five percent uh five percent uh flask effect is about two movement speed and then once you reverse chill it's almost like three movement speed so it's it's not a bad node uh, you could also get this one here. It is three points, though. So for what it is, it's not super worth it uh, to get three points for, for one node. Uh, but depending what level you are, so this is 93, right? Um, well, this was 92. Uh, if you get to 95, you can afford to get these three nodes. And if you get to, like, 96, you could also pick up that node. And every node boosts your movement speed up, essentially. Uh, another thing we're going to get is Dexterity. The reason we're getting so much dexterity is because we are running a lot of transcendent spirits. Transcendent, sp uh, transcendent spirits remove the dexterity that is allocated in the radius, but every 10 dexterity allocated will give you 2% movement speed. So as you can see in this in this area here in the circle, we have like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, up to 6 dex nodes, which basically means 12% movement speed. Uh, in this cluster over here, we have a lot more. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, um, 9, and 10. So this one's giving us like 20 movement speed and so on. Uh, so as you can see, all these 10% dexterity nodes that serve absolutely no purpose. The only reason we're getting them is essentially to uh, to get 2% movement speed for every 10 dexterity, which is pretty damn good. That's how you scale your movement speed up in like the 900s. Uh, once you apply the reverse chill on yourself. That's essentially what we're getting from the tree. We don't get any damage, really. Uh, if you look at the tree, there's absolutely no damage. It's all jewel sockets. Uh, there's one thing we do get, though, which is pain attunement. Uh, we do go low life um, with the use of 
blood magic on a on a on either hatred or herald of ash with increased duration something i'll go over into in a second when we get to the skills uh, but we do go low life because this gives us a massive amount of damage uh this payment attunement here so very important that you do get this and very important that you are low life when it comes to trying to insta phase his arrow otherwise uh the buffs that they recently uh this patch i believe uh, or this league is the league that they buffed all the bosses, I believe. It might have been the last one. I can't quite remember. Uh, but Izaro got a pretty massive buff. And uh, insta phases him is actually much, much, much harder than it used to be. Uh, what used to be doable and fairly easy is because Izaro had absolutely no chaos resistances, basically. So you could just get as much elemental as extra chaos everywhere as possible. Physical as extra chaos, uh, or fire as extra chaos, cold, whatever. Just everything converted to chaos damage, and then he would be super vulnerable to chaos damage. The thing is, now they buffed his chaos damage, uh, chaos resistance, I believe. Uh, but the biggest part is that they cut by half pretty much any source of damage that was being converted into additional chaos damage. So elemental's extra chaos damage got cut by half, uh, and alongside all the other ones as well. So it makes it much, much harder to get the damage. So payment attunement is going to help you out greatly. And to be honest, I'm not sure it's even doable unless you have extremely, extremely good like legacy stat sticks and standard or something. But when it comes to League, you, unless you have insanely good weapons, you pretty much need payment attunement and to go low life to actually be able to constantly skip the Zyro phase. Um, and what I mean when I'm saying skipping the Zyro phase is essentially that Zyro comes up of his platform and your traps do so much damage so quickly to him that he goes right back down. He doesn't attack you. He doesn't really do anything. And the fact that he goes right back down, especially if you're hiding in the corner using phase run, uh, he doesn't get to target you. Then um, you uh, you save quite a bit of quite a few seconds. We're talking about like 10 plus seconds per Izaro fight just by the fact that you're insta phasing him. So that is something that's very important. Now, to make this happen, though, there is one thing. You need a lot of trap trigger area of effect. Um, trap trigger area of effect doesn't come very uh, very often, either on the tree or otherwise. Uh, but trap trigger area of effect. So there is a little bit here, uh, 30%, which is like whatever. There is a, a decent bit here. This is best, basically the best cluster in the game, I believe. We have 20%, 20%, and 30%. So 70% in here. This cluster is not too bad either. 60% here, and then you get another little 20% uh, here. So technically, if you want to insta-phase his arrow, you need 270%, and that is a bare minimum. I would advise at least get 290% uh, trap trigger area of effect. Otherwise, chances are you will not... Uh, you, your traps will not trigger when he becomes uh, vulnerable or, you know, targetable, I should say. Uh, because your traps will not trigger because they don't see him. And to make your traps see him, you need more trap trigger area of effect. So how do you reach the, uh, the threshold of 270, which is a bare minimum? As I said, I would advise to go at least 290. Well, most of it will come from these jewels called hair triggers. Uh, I believe the roll on them is 40 to 60% trap trigger area of effect. They are extremely, extremely cheap jewels. We're talking about 1C jewels. Uh, very, very cheap. So it's very important to get perfect ones. Uh, so you're going to want three of these, essentially. Uh, three of those for 180 then normally you're going to get this node because it's actually pretty good. It gives you two more traps, which is a lot of damage, and 20%. So alongside your um, your three hair triggers, you're going to go up to 200%, which means at this point you're missing at the very least 70%. Uh, so you could also you could get this whole cluster here, which is, well, 70%. Uh, so at this point, you'd have 270 if you had three perfect hair triggers, Master Zapper, or uh, sorry, Master Sapper, and this cluster here. That being said, I said you should probably go a little bit over that. So what I did is I got this node as well, trap and uh, trap damage and area trigger, which is 20% here, and this brings me up to uh, the required threshold of 290%. Now, one thing to note, though, is that you actually don't necessarily need them. Depending how try-hard you want to be about this, you don't need to actually um, get them on the tree because you can actually anoint them. Uh, there is the Blight Helmet here called the Cowl of whatever. There's multiple variations. 
Uh, so there's the cowl of the thermophile, serranophile, and cryophile, which is for like fire, cold, and, and lightning. And uh, what this gives you is can have a second enchant modifier or enchantment modifier and well anointments actually count as enchantment modifiers so as you can see on this one here i have expen uh, expeditious munitions and also unstable munitions which means that when i turn this helmet on when i put it on uh, i get this node here and that node here which allow me to actually save all those points on the tree to instead invest in movement speed this is not something that I would consider worth it if you want a farm lab like for profit and for consistency sake uh, because it becomes really kind of a pain in the ass to constantly be, you know, changing uh, your, your helmet every time you get to Izaro. Like you're going to run around the lab with your Devotos. Um, you're going to run around the lab with your Devotos and then once you get to, to Izaro, you're going to switch in the, the, um, the double, you know, anoint helmet to get the damage. And also the trap trigger area of effect. It's 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 min maxing, but it's not worth it if you're just going for you know profit and consistency in lab. So that is one thing uh, to note. You need that 270 percent trap trigger area of effect, and 270 is a bare minimum. If you have any less than that, it's never gonna work. And if you have 270 exactly, it's gonna work like maybe 70 percent of the time or something. Uh, unless maybe my trap placement is just bad, but I try to place it as on the edge as most as possible. And to be honest, when I only have exactly 270, it seems at least with Wave of Conviction traps that it's got a pretty hard time being consistent. But as soon as I go up to 290, that problem just goes away, and all of a sudden I don't have any issues anymore. So let's talk about like early league versus end or versus later in the league, basically no investment versus investment. Uh, you'll see one thing though, on this variation of the tree, this is a reverse chill tree. So I do have all this this cluster of nodes here, all these for onslaught effect, which by the way amounts to about two percent movement speed per node on here. So that's absolutely not bad. Uh, and then we have a jewel socket with an empty jewel because it's a timeless jewel that goes in here. And the point blank is being uh, changed into the agnostic, which is a keystone that um, that brings your energy shield to zero and that is something to do with reverse chill which I'll talk about in a bit um, but otherwise if you're not playing the reverse chill variation you can afford to drop all these points here and actually uh, you know invest into different things maybe you're lacking damage maybe you're uh, maybe you want more movement speed whatever it is you you can go ahead and get it by um, by dropping all this because this is for the reverse chill variation of the build Otherwise, though, there's not much more to say on the tree. We're just going for movement speed. We're going for dexterity within our transcendent spirits. And then we're going for a little bit of resistances. As you can see, I had to get survivalist uh, to cap out my resistances. It's not something that I would I want to do. It's just that I don't really have a choice in my, in my situation. I had to get survivalist. Otherwise, I'm just not going to live to, to tell the tale. So that's pretty much why that is. Um... We are getting uh, three hair triggers, like I said. One of them for me is here. The other one is here, and the other one is here. There is also uh, another jewel socket here. We can use Conqueror's Potency. It gives us eight percent flask effect and also three percent uh, aura effect, essentially. So it's not the worst. It's not the best. Technically, you could drop this and not feel too bad about it, uh, but it's not bad either. Um, and also, these four percent mana nodes can be useful as well. That being said, early league, I would probably drop this, and I would probably drop this because I would not be going, uh, you know, reverse shield. I would probably run this setup. I would probably also get this here. I would get this here, um, and then I wouldn't have to worry about changing the helmet. I wouldn't have to worry about uh, a whole lot of stuff, and this is only level 84. So technically, I guess the minimum potential level you could start doing this at Efficiently, anyways, it's pretty much level 84 because it looks like 84 is actually quite good. You've got uh, some movement speed here, some flask effect. You've got your hair triggers. You've got the transcendent setups. Uh, yeah, so 84 is probably as, as low as it gets in terms of levels uh, to start running this build. Obviously, the more the better. Uh, I ended up at 95 on my character. I could push to 100 or even 98 to get a little bit more movement speed. But I decided to stop at 95 because honestly, uh, 
you know, the, I wasn't going to get that much out of it. I get a whole lot more out of it instead from the swapping of the, uh, the helmet. So, let's get into where our damage comes from and the skills. So, we do run phase run. Phase run is ran with a level 4 enhance and uh, with efficacy and increased duration. The reason why we run efficacy is because it gives us increased skill effect duration. Uh, that's the only reason we do that. That being said, if you have a watcher's eye that gives you, uh, like mine here, that gives you cooldown recovery speed of movement skill uh, while you you have haste, then uh, you actually don't need to run efficacy. Uh, so you could run it in your weapon or whatever on a three link because it's going to be permanent uptime. As you can see mine here, I run them on blood magic, my phase run, and it is permanent. My phase run lasts for four seconds. The cooldown is about two seconds. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, 2.2 seconds, and it, it lasts for four. So I do have permanent phase run despite the fact that I don't have... Um, efficacy on my setup. Now one thing to note though, wherever you do decide to run your phase run with your your level 4 enhance, which by the way is very cheap, level 4 enhance is very cheap, uh, not even an exalt, kind of cheap, uh, make sure to run them in a plus 1 socketed gems item. So it could be a pair of boots, it could be uh, some gloves, it could be anything, but make sure to run the phase run in a plus 1 uh, socketed gems because it's going to get your enhanced to level 5 and then once you're enhanced at level 5 it gives 32% quality to your phase run 32% quality on top of what I believe I have is a 23 yeah 23 quality it brings it all the way up to 55 quality and at that point it is giving me 67% movement speed by just hitting Q uh, so it is a big deal and if you have this up permanently it just ends up being a lot of movement speed so that's one thing to note with your phase run. Try to get that in a plus one socket of gems item. Now we do run smoke mine. Uh, smoke mine is whatever. You could pretty much run it with anything. Uh, your smoke mine lasts for pretty much whatever amount of time. And the buff seems to last for about 10 seconds. Now if I, if I drop efficacy and I also drop increased duration, the buff lasts for 5 seconds. So the reason why we're running with efficacy and whatnot is to get that movement speed to last a little bit longer. So if I run it with just the increased duration, which is a 2020, we get 74% duration, which brings the buff duration to about nine seconds. Efficacy is just that one more second, which you know could be the difference maker, but it probably won't be. So don't see it as a necessity to run it with uh, like a level 21 efficacy or whatever. Honestly, like a 2020 increased duration is going to be more than enough. Even like a 1550 and whatever, if you can get a cheap corrupted one, is going to be more than enough. Uh, because most of the zones in lab take something like 30 to 4 seconds to run. So having it, having the buff the entire time for 10 seconds is actually complete overkill. Uh, because most zones are actually very, very short. And um, they don't take that long to run. We do run Grace and Haste. Um... I run those in my chest piece on a plus two AOE Queen of the Forest. These are extremely cheap as well. I think I got this for literally 3C, uh, this Queen of the Forest. And if you pay attention, this is a perfect one, at least in terms of resistances. 10 fire, 25 lightning, 40 cold, plus two AOE gems. And I'm pretty confident I paid this literally three chaos. Uh, it doesn't have quality on it though. So that's one thing to note. And the increased evasion is not that good. But the thing is we get so much flask effect on the tree and whatnot, that my defenses uh, with a, an experimenter's Jade Flask of Reflexes goes literally all the way up to, oh, I pressed the wrong button, uh, goes all the way up to 64,000 with nothing else, so just my experimenter's uh, Jade Flask of Reflexes and uh, the running the Grace. Now, I could even drop Grace completely, and I would still be capped on the Queen of the Forest. As you can see, it brings me up to 46,000 evasion. Though the reason I still run Grace is because uh, my Watcher's Eye gives me 15% movement speed while affected by Grace. So it's another 15% movement speed when I have Grace on. And obviously more evasion means, you know, higher chance of dodging hits. So when something does, you know, try to hit you, a uh, better chance to dodge it is always, uh, you know, a positive thing. So that is one thing to note. Uh, 
haste we are running it i'm personally running haste for like i said my watcher's eye if you don't have the cooldown recovery speed of movement skill uh the other stat that is quite good is permanent phasing so it says you have phasing while affected uh by haste so then you have permanent phasing and what permanent phasing is really good for is that it allows you to run the alert claw i'm not sure if i have an alert claw in here nope i don't uh the alert claw which you can see right here, gives you 10% movement speed, or sorry, not 10% movement speed, 15% movement speed while phasing. So if you are phasing, which you always are if you have the Watcher's Eye mod with phasing and haste, then it's basically a 10%, or sorry, a 15% movement speed increase at all time. So that's pretty good. Um, I personally found that Ichimanji was actually better. Uh, the um, The increased effect of buffs on you was... Not as good in terms of movement speed than, say, the uh, the Allure Claws. That being said, the reduced mana reserved was actually uh, way more useful to me when it comes to running the Reverse Chill build. If you're not playing the Reverse Chill build, I would not recommend Ichimanji uh, because you never have mana issues. But if you're playing the Reverse Chill build, which makes use of the Agnostic Keystone, the problem is that while you're not on full life, you sacrifice 20% of your mana per second. To recover that much life. So as soon as you're not full on life. Your mana depletion is through the roof. Which is why I run just about everything on on, on, um, on blood magic. Because then I take care of that issue. I never to, never really have to worry about mana. Because even if I don't have mana. I can cast phase run. I can throw my smoke mine. I can charge dash. Because everything is being run on blood magic. And the only reason I'm really allowed to do that. Is because of the timeless jewel. That's giving me the movement speed. Uh, cooldown uh, movement speed skill cooldown recovery speed which is very very good otherwise though like i said i would run an alert claw because 15 percent movement speed is more than 10 percent and obviously once it's multiplied by the reverse chill it's like 15 percent versus uh like 20 or something or 21 or, or 22 or whatever so it's uh it's a little bit more once again because it is getting multiplied by 30 percent uh then i my shield of choice is the Peripatea, which is the uh, synthesis shield. It rolls anywhere from 10 to 20% movement speed, I believe. My roll is a 20%. You could also get an 18. It's not the end of the world. Uh, note, though, that you are running a shield, which means you do lose 3% movement speed from it, I believe. Uh, unless, unless uh, the um, this node here, or the gladiator, actually applies to your shield as well. Uh, because it says ignore mo all movement speed penalties from armor, but I don't think that applies to a shield because I don't think a shield is considered armor. So that's one thing to note. Uh, whatever roll you do get, remember that it's minus 3% because it's a shield, which is the hidden uh, implicit of a shield, minus 3% movement speed. That being said, it goes all the way up to 20%, and then you can get some pretty cool corruptions uh, on them because there are multiple implicits also. So you can get cool implicits and also cool corruptions. You can get resistance implicits. You can get, uh, you know, damage implicits, whatever it is. I personally went for obviously physical damage from hits taken as cold damage because that is my way of reverse chilling myself. Um, so that is how I take damage. Now, to go into how that works, essentially, it's a little bit of jumping through hoops to make it happen. Uh, I do want to give credit for this to uh, Gel Beachy, Nathan Bolton on YouTube. I'll uh, link his channel in the description. Uh, I believe he's the first person who came up with this build and made it public, at least. Uh, there may or may not have been other people running Reverse Shield before him. Um, global consensus is that there were already people running a Reverse Shield before he made the build public and started streaming it and stuff. But, uh, despite the, that fact, um, I think... Um, He's the first person to really popularize it, or popularize it a little bit more, and to 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 show people, you know, how it's done. So, uh, you know, huge thank you to him, because that's basically actually where I learned it. Uh, I innovated from that build uh, on my own, my own personal build, but that's another story. Um, I basically just added a couple different mechanics to make it a little bit safer, a little bit easier to play. So, for example, using steel skin. Uh, if you steel skin at the right level with the right cooldown recovery speed, uh, every two weapon swaps, uh, you won't take too much damage. So let me get into this. How does reverse shilling work? So, 
reverse shield basically is chilling yourself, right? So you want to be chilled. Now, if you're chilled, it there is an action speed um, modifier applied to you, which is minus 30%. So let's say your movement speed is, you know, 100, you get chilled, your movement speed is now 70. That's kind of how it works. Uh, that's it with a maximum chill of 30%. There are less chills. You could chill yourself for only 2%, 3%, 5%, but the maximum chill is 30%. Or 30%. So how does it work? Well, we use a winter weave ring, which is the uh, update, uh, faded version of the blood, blood boil, I believe, ring. Uh, and it gives you the effective chill on yours reversed, which means instead of slowing you down by 30%, it speeds you up by 30%. So now we have to think about how do we actually chill ourselves. There are multiple ways to chill yourself. The easiest one is to take physical damage is cold damage, basically. So how does that happen? How do you take physical damage consistently without literally killing yourself? Um, there are a few ways to go about it. One of them is to do the shield, which turns some of the physical damage you take as cold damage. You could also go with the Watcher's Eye, which I believe I spoke about earlier, uh, to turn some physical damage into some cold damage as well, which you can fit the Watcher's Eye in the build, by the way, because as I said, you don't need to run Grace. So if you have a Watcher's Eye with like purity of elements and you've been struggling to you know, cap all your resistances, it's a very good way to, to actually run the build uh, as a reverse shield build early in the league is by running it with purity of elements uh, with physical damage taken as cold and not running grace. It's not as min-max because you lose some movement speed, but it is uh, it is very consistent and it's also very cheap to do compared to, you know, the rest, uh, like getting this kind of shield and stuff. Uh, this shield, technically, if I wanted to sell it, I could sell it for a very, very large sum of currency. Like, anywhere from 20x to 50x probably for this shield uh, because it is a 30 uh, a 20% movement speed uh, roll which is perfect and it is also a perfect 8% physical damage from hits taken as gold which is also quite important when it comes to this build so another way you can chill yourself is also to use gold's brittle I think I also talked about that because your the mana cost is you know taking as physical damage then so long as you have a, a source that is turning that you know physical damage into cold damage it's also going to chill yourself the way I go about it, though, is I do the weapon swap method. So on my weapon swap, I have a an insanity, uh, an insanity uh, scepter here. The insanity scepter basically uh, spawns three minions. The three minions, when they die, will hurt me for 350 physical damage because of the heartbound loop. Now, this 350 physical damage, 8% of that is converted to cold damage. Now, it's not actually 8% of 350, it's 8% of 350 times 3, because there are 3 of these little spectral guys. Uh, so, you do end up taking a very large amount of damage. And some a part of that damage is actually you know taken as cold, because of the shield corruption, or the Watcher's Eye. So, normally, if I take off this belt, and I do that, I take the damage, you'll see that I'm only chilling myself for, oops, I'm only chilling myself for, well, basically nothing. I'm actually not chilling myself at all. Um, and the reason I'm not chilling myself at all is because despite the fact that I'm taking that much damage, right, only 8% of that is cold. So let's say I'm taking 350 damage times 3, which let's say, let's just round up to 1,000. I'm taking 1,000 physical damage, 8% is, phys is turning to cold, so I'm taking 80 cold damage. Now, 80 cold damage on my entire life pool is actually, first off, it's not 80 cold damage because resistances here, as you can see my uh, cold resistance here, is 83 and it's also 76. So out of that 80 cold damage that I should be taking, once you consider you know, my resistances and stuff, I'm only taking maybe 3 to 4 cold damage or something. So obviously, I'm not going to chill myself from that. Because to chill yourself, you have to take a portion of your HP as cold damage. So how you fix that is by using the Oxygen Belt. The Oxygen Belt makes it so that the, the, the chill effect and freeze duration are based on 100% of your energy shield. So if I, turn the, if I put this on, you'll see that if I was to remove this summon jewel, I have 228 ES. So, 228 ES mostly comes from the shield, which has 150, unfortunately. 
But if I go to my character page now and I change, you'll see that I get an action speed modifier of 11%. Which means that if I'm chilling myself off of my ES, which is 228, and I'm taking this much damage, it's giving me a, an 11% chill. So that's not good enough. We want 30%. So how do we do that? Well, we use this timeless jewel here, a militant faith. And so long as you have a, by high Templar Venarius, that, uh, that is going to give you the keystone, the agnostic. The agnostic gives you the maximum energy shield is zero. So now you're chilling yourself based off your energy shield and you have no energy shield. So even if you were to take 0.5 physical damage, or sorry, 0.5 cold damage upon your weapon swap, you would still get a 30% uh, action speed modifier, a 30% full chill, simply because there's no ES to actually, you know, stop the chill from happening because you are chilling yourself off of your energy shield. So that's fairly, uh, f fairly, uh, important to to uh, to note uh, it's basically all the things put together that make the build work so at the very least you need the two rings winter weave and, and hardbound loop if you go with the weapon swap version you need a shield or some other way to take physical damage as cold and you need an oxen belt and that is uh, no matter what you need an oxen belt because there's there's no way you're ever going to get a full chill on yourself without uh, the chill effect being based on on energy shield instead so, you don't actually need the Agnostic Keystone, though. That is one thing to note. Uh, you know how I said uh, that I was shielding myself for 11%? Well, yes, but there is a way that you could get you to chill yourself for 30%. One of them would be to decrease the amount of energy shield you have. So, changing shield using another shield, which does not offer any energy shield. Using some gloves, which do not happen to have 29 energy shield. Using the the least uh, possible energy shield roll on an auction, which is 60, are all things that are going to help to obviously self-chill. And another thing to note is that you can also just simply have less cold resistance. The less cold resistance you, you have, the more cold damage you take um, when whenever you, you know, you take physical damage, which is converted to cold. The less cold resistance you have, well, the the more chill effect well the, the the higher freeze or sorry chill you're gonna inflict on yourself so that's that now going back to this we uh the damage comes from wave of conviction uh, that is the skill of choice so as you can see we use a wave of conviction with multiple traps conk effect trap and mine trap support and elemental focus uh, you can use awakened you can also use like a level 21 it's whatever um I'm personally using it in a skin of the loyal with plus two AOE gems with the also plus one gems from the fact that it's a skin of the loyal which is going to be like plus three AOE gems. Essentially it's quite good uh, but you could also run it in a tabula which just plus two AOE gems and that would be more than enough damage as well. Uh, you don't really need this. The reason why I have this is because my scepter, my scepters kind of suck. Uh, this one's quite good. Uh, the best way to get damage for the build is actually to get physical damage as extra X. So physical is extra fire, physical is extra random, physical is extra uh, lightning on scepters are all really good. Uh, penetration is also really good. And of course spell damage and uh, non-chaos is extra chaos or just pure spell damage if you, if you get a good roll are also all quite good. My other scepter, this one, as you can see, is only a 13% and an 18% with basically nothing else on it. So since this scepter kind of sucks, I had to make up the damage somewhere, and I decided to make up the damage uh, by using a plus 2 AoE gem skin of the Loyals. Uh, with the colors 3 green and 3 blues, I think this cost me 3 exalts, so it's not that expensive either. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to get the damage requi required. So we do use Wave of Conviction. Uh, we use Righteous Fire. So you have to time your Righteous Fire. Righteous Fire, basically, the reason why we use it is because the last line, as you can see, grants 37% more spell damage. That is the only reason why we use Righteous Fire. So the idea is that we're going to pre-trap all, all our stuff, turn our auras on, and the moment Isara becomes vulnerable or, you know, attackable, we turn on Righteous Fire, then we phase run, and uh, that's going to give us a big boost in our damage. And this wasn't necessary before, but with the nerf, the constant nerf that's been happening to spell damage, 
uh, to chaos damage conversion and, and everything, uh, righteous fire is actually kind of a must now. And if you mess up your righteous fire, it could be the difference between insta phasing him and just outright dying. So that's something to note. Um, we use charge dash with faster attacks. You could also use calling strike on this. Uh, you can use Blood Magic, depending on which variation of the build you're using. The Agnostic, I try to use everything on Blood Magic, so I'm never getting wrecked by the fact that my mana is, you know, taking a severe hit every time I weapon swap. Uh, but I'm also, uh, you, you can also consider using um, uh, what I use, which is Calling Strike. And the reason I use Calling Strike is because... Uh, it one shots, right? Let's say you don't have quite enough damage to kill the boss. Well, you weapon swap back to your Ichimanji, you charge dash, and he's dead. Uh, and that has saved me. That has saved me uh, quite a few times in the past because sometimes you're just about like five, like two, three percent, and he's just not dead. He doesn't even have an HP bar. That's how low he is. Uh, this is going to finish the job, so it's quite good to have. Uh, also, note that quality on your calling strike will give you more attack speed. So I did go over Grace and Haste. I run it with a level 4 Enlighten uh, to get as much mana as possible because mana was an issue. It is no longer an issue. Technically, I could probably drop this and run Lab comfortably because everything I do is basically uh, going off of my life pool at this point because I'm pretty much running every single thing on Blood Magic. Uh, but before that, I was running on mana, so I needed as much mana as possible, which is why I was running Ichimanji and why I was running a level 4 Enlightened. That being said, doesn't seem to be necessary anymore, so um, you can save the currency there if you run uh, my current build, which is the Reverse Shield version. Uh, we use Smoke Mine, obviously, with uh, increased duration of Fixie. I went over that. We use Phase Run. Lightning Aegis comes from the shield. There's nothing else to say about that. So in terms of items, I already went over the Reverse Shield variation. When it comes to the non-Reverse Shield variation, there's just a couple things that change. The two ring slots are going to be to cap out resistances, and if you can get more damage, good. Otherwise, life, whatever. Uh, they're basically mostly just there to cap your resistances easily so you don't have to get any resistances on the tree. So you get two good rest rings. The gloves are going to cap out your resistances. Uh, you could use some blight gloves. The blight gloves would allow you to actually anoint this node here, which is diamond skin, because it does give you 3% movement speed, which is fairly minimal, but it also gives you 12% elemental resistances, and it's a very cheap anoint. So... 12% all res on 3 MS on top of a pair of gloves that already gives you something like 15 all res or something. Uh, it turns into a 100 plus, you know, res pair of gloves with 3% movement speed. So that's not bad at all. Um, so there is the consideration for blight gloves. Otherwise, if you're running the reverse shield variation, this is just about the only place you have to actually get resistances is your gloves. So it's important to get really good gloves with high fire and high lightning resistance. Uh, because normally when it comes to cold res, there's a lot of other places you can get cold res, like on, for example, you corner the fourth, um, and elsewhere on the build. The belt, it gets changed for a string of servitude with 36% movement speed, that's quite obvious. Uh, the boots, no matter which variation of the build you're playing, you want to get some 50% increased movement speed, uh, boots. That's, that's a definitive, you never really want to not use those, they're really, really good. Um... Even, like, people have considered Tailwind boots and stuff like that. The only problem is you're not critting anything um, ever. So since you don't crit, you don't get Tailwind, you don't get Elusive, you don't get all that stuff. So, uh, you know, you don't really have a choice but to go 7 lead steps. You can get the 10% movement speed if you haven't been hit recently or taken damage uh, enchant. But if you're playing the Reverse Chill uh, version of the build, you are taking damage every 2 seconds when you weapon swap. So you really can't afford to get that enchant. Uh, so what you can get is the 10% movement speed corruption, but those tend to be very rare and also very expensive. Uh, another thing, career reward seems to be uh, the go-to for any variations of the build. It gives you 10% movement speed, and then you can also uh, corrupt 10% movement speed. And the anointment of choice seems to be freedom of movement. Freedom of movement is right here. It's not the best node in the game, uh, but it does save you like 4 points to get it, and it's basically just 10% movement speed while phasing, which amounts to 10% more movement speed, uh, essentially. There's no other real nodes that I 
can think of that would be more beneficial than 10% movement speed from one node, that's actually quite good. Um, otherwise, I did go over that. Oh, you yeah, we run with the Devotos, obviously, because 20% movement speed, and the Enchant of Choice is Smoke Mine grants 30% more movement speed. So as you can see, if I just use the Smoke Mine, I am already quite fast. Uh, it gives me... Um, it gives me... How much movement speed does it give me? Let's have a look. It gives me 346. And my base movement speed is... 280. So from 280 to 346. So I get 66% movement speed uh, from the smoke mine, which is actually almost just as much as from the phase run. And obviously, once you put everything together, it turns out to be a fuck ton of movement speed. So uh, that's it, basically for the for the actual items. For when it comes to flasks, uh, I use a catalyzed because I think that's the best one for me. Anyways. I use Catalyze of Dowsing. The reason I use Dowsing is because that is the only way to stop your uh, your Righteous Fire from burning. So, if I turn on Righteous Fire, you'll see that I burn. Um, I burn. I can't stop it. I can't take it off. I can't do anything. There's no way for me to actually remove Righteous Fire until I hit one life. When I hit one life, it's going to stop. Now, one thing that's pretty cool about a Dowsing Flask, which is this one... Is that I can hit righteous fire, hit righteous fire, hit righteous fire. Now my life starts going down. Pop a flask. And did it not work? Oh, I hit the wrong. Did I hit the wrong button? Let me see. That's awkward. Yeah, I think I hit Q instead of uh, instead of 1. Let's see. Yeah, as you can see, if you hit the dowsing flask, it does stop your Righteous Fire. It's one of the only way in the entire game to actually stop Righteous Fire. Uh, I think it's the only way is to get a, an Ignite flask. So it's actually quite useful to have. And it's not mandatory, obviously, but it is uh, very, very useful to have an Ignite flask. We are running the Overflowing Chalice. The reason for that is because it gives you us 100% increased charges gained by other flasks. So all our other flasks... While this one is going on, are getting twice the charges, uh, which is why Pathfinder is so good. We pretty much has inf we we almost have infinite flask sustain uh, in lab while we don't kill a single thing. We obviously use an Alchemist Quick Quicksilver Flask of Adrenaline. If you can afford a 26% quality one, that's even better because it gives you like 3.7 seconds on your uh, on your Quicksilver. The Experimenter's Jade Flask of Reflexes. Experimenter's is not necessary. It just gives you duration. You could use anything else, really. Uh, but this one gives us evasion rating during flask effects. Uh, and the reason for that is because we want to cap out 45,000 for the Queen of the Forest. So that's the reason why we, we use this flask. The Chemist Silver Flask of Warding. Uh, we use this, obviously. The warding is very important. It's for curses. There are uh, traps in lab or, and, like, pylons and shit that... Uh, that uh, curse you with different things. For example, Temporal Chains is one of the worst ones because that's going to slow you down a lot. So you pop this flask, all of a sudden you're immune to, to Temporal Chains for a while. You're good to go. You can keep running. The Prefix Chemist is whatever. I have reduced charges here, so I get to use two charges every single time uh, before, uh, before it goes uh, unusable. But otherwise, that's about it. For the jewels, I basically already went over them. There's the three hair triggers, there's the ton of transcendent spirits, there's the watcher's eye, and uh, there's the conqueror's potency. Um, and for the most part, that's that's about it for the build. I've pretty much covered both variations, the uh, reverse shield setup and the non-reverse shield setup. Uh, I would advise, if you guys are thinking about making a lab runner, maybe for next league or something to go with the non reverse shield variation. The reverse shield variation is really just a race. It is not a, a, a playstyle that is uh, convenient and it's also not a playstyle that's consistent. Uh, so that's something you should know about. Uh, according to what our calculations and what we looked, if you don't play the reverse shield variation so you don't have to pick up any of these nodes here, it seems that um, you should be able to switch to lab running at about level 84, which if you're an experienced player, um, Level 84, you can pretty much be level 84 on the first day of a league, or at least the first night of a league. So, league starts on Friday after or Friday afternoon. You know, 
at about midnight, 2 a.m. or so, you should probably be in the in the you know about to hit level 80 if you're experienced. Of course, if you're not, maybe it's going to take you a couple more days. Uh, but for an experienced player, you could literally be running Uber Lab already on the first day of the league if you actually wanted to. So that is one thing to note. Obviously, that's going to re require preparation, though. So that's just about it, I think. Uh, this bit video's been going on forever. I mean, I like my guides to be absolutely as, you know, complete as possible. And I think I went over everything. So, as always, I do want to give a huge shout-out to my patrons, my supporters. Uh, so, uh, Drew, Jared, Kfish, Caleb, Corey, Dave, Robert, Castigus, Hunter, uh, sorry, Hunter, Matthias, Rakesh, Tim, and Mr. Coffee. Huge thanks to you guys. Also, special thanks to our boy, our, our boys, Cascus, Kfish, Mr. Coffee, Emil the Delver, Super J, and General XTC. Uh, you guys are the, the, the biggest supporters of this channel, and I appreciate all of you guys. Also, appreciate everybody for watching this video and whoever made it to the uh, to the end of it and actually um, watch the whole thing. I don't know. Comment something to let me know uh, because obviously it's a long video and. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna like all your comments because you guys you guys are true G's. Otherwise, hopefully you guys enjoyed, and that's gonna be Matthew signing out until next one, which I'm not sure what it'll be. I'm pretty sure it's gonna be about the new socket limit, 20 web socket limit. I think I want to make a video about that. So if you want to know my opinion about the whole 20 web socket thing and what I intend to do to uh, to make it work, uh, you know, stay tuned. Otherwise, that's gonna be Matthew signing out until next one. Peace.